familiar were, were you with the book prior to even getting involved in this movie? I'd read it and loved it. I'd read it and absolutely laughed out loud. What do you think resonated so strongly? Because even though it was about a British woman, it crossed international borders and everybody seemed to, you know, delve into this book. Right. Uh, you know, I think that everybody kind of related to her journey. It's a journey of self-discovery and uh, self-acceptance through all these missteps. And uh, I think we can uh, cross-culturally and uh, not age-specifically, not um, gender-specifically relate to it in terms of her being able to differentiate between what makes her happy, discovering what she really wants, who she really is, as opposed to society's paradigms which are projected onto her in terms of what she's supposed to aspire to achieve and who she's supposed to be and society's definitions of beauty and success, what that means. I think we all kind of relate to that and love her because of her sense of humor um, along the way. It's and honest. And plus sitting in front of the TV eating whatever we want to eat. You got through those exactly. Binges? No muesli, Cool Ranch Doritos. And even the song where she sings all by myself, there's something right. about <laughs> you could depend on yourself no matter who else. Yeah. Do you yeah. think you have that? I mean, do you have a real good sense of self that no matter what, in the face of adversity or triumph, there's, there's Renee there? I hope so. I hope so. I'm pretty familiar with what my boundaries are. I'm pretty in touch with what makes me happy. That's all kind of really simple. Oh, yeah, I think so. Let's get one of the unpleasant questions out of the way at the beginning so we can be frivolous as, as it goes on. And okay. Is, as talented as you are as an actor, it must have been incredibly frustrating that after you were cast, the press wanted to vilify you. They weren't even giving you the chance because you were not British-born and mm. you shouldn't play this part. Mm. How difficult was that for you? Oh, I understood it. Um, it lasted for about two minutes, my awareness of all of that, because we went pretty much straight into pre-production and your world becomes very small. It becomes all about getting in the car with Mark, Mark Richards, going to work, filming, getting in the car with Mark Richards, going home, preparing for the next day. So I wasn't aware of the weather or world events or what other people were projecting onto our experience in terms of criticism and acceptance or not. Um, so I, I suppose it... In this case, it was an ignorance is bliss scenario, and I didn't, I wasn't really so aware of it. And everyone on the set was very, very kind and supportive. So even if I was really, really crap, they weren't letting on. You know, <laughs> oh, that's great, Renee. The accent, you're doing great. She's awful. Great, amazing. Keep going. Do you know they made it safe to try, which was nice, very nice from the get go. So that was what my experience of the filming was, and it wasn't so much about um, external things and the periphery. For a lot of us. I got it, Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> I do. Now it's gone. Now we cut back <laughs> oh, and it's so gone. That's like continuity. <laughs> I know. I wouldn't, mind st I wouldn't mind starting over at some point if um, with that first question because I was completely inarticulate and repeated the same word six times. It is. Well, I mean, keep what, we'll let him keep what keep what keep you everything like. Else. So keep what you like, but re-ask what you don't. Oh, no, no, everything was fine. You're okay? Did you feel uncomfortable with the first one about the book? Yeah, or? I just retard it out then because I really, really do have opinions about okay. the book and I like it. But go back to it later. Let's, it, let's end on it. Okay, we'll end on that. So one. when you're out of time, we'll go back to it. Okay, how about that? Fair enough. Are we rolling? We are rolling. One of, it's interesting is for all of us in life that we're kind of condoned if we eat too much. You know, that everything's about weight control, and don't eat too much, you'll be sick, so on and so forth. You didn't have that worry in this movie because your job was to eat as much as you could. Can you walk us through a little bit about this journey? How strange was that for you? Um, it was only strange initially thinking about what it might be like. And when it came down to it, it was just technically very boring, frankly. Really, truly, technically very boring. We went to a physician and we told him what it was that we were trying to achieve because it was, well, firstly, it's important to me that she, her physicality reflect her lifestyle. That's all. It was a, it was a, a character choice and because she was so important to so many people and she was not my creation, but she's Helen Fielding's book. I felt, I mean, character rather, in this book, I felt a certain responsibility to her to, you know, legitimize her as best I could and to myself as a fan of this character, 
And I liked her so much that I wanted it to be as honest as it could be, and that seemed like um, a, a good place to start. What did you have to eat? Well, you know, I went to the doctor, and we told him what we wanted to do, and he said, okay, well, if you want to achieve that, you have to add this, and here's a helpful list of um, things to do and way to do it, and we just implemented that plan into the day. So it was, you know, right there with dialect classes as part of the day, and, and uh, learning lines and wardrobe fittings and showing up for work on time. It was just Don't part know. of it. More than yeah, you. yeah, and there was definitely uh, cheating here and there because, you know, the portions were kind of big and sometimes, well, you know, I'd rather have a couple Kit Kats. <laughs> and it was fun sometimes to say, you know, yeah, I think, you know what, I better have two Sundays because it's for the good of the film. <laughs> have you ever kept a diary? Yes. It's, what kind of cathartic experience is it for someone? It helps you sleep, doesn't it? You get it out, and then you're done, and you can rest. Um, creatively, it's an interesting outlet. You never know where it's going to go. Uh, I think it's wonderful. I have a best friend whose mother kept a diary throughout her adolescence and had written down the day she had met her father and gave that to her recently. You know, this is the man, this is the And I think that that is beautiful. There's something really beautiful about it. That's such a gift to know your mother's intimate thoughts at 20. I mean, that's extraordinary. I'm, that I'm not that gonna... responsible <laughs> in terms of I, that's, I just can't. I just haven't been able to do that. But I'm sorry, what have I? Would you worry that somebody would read it as we see in the movie? Oh, I'm sure eventually it happens. I'm sure it's happened already. <laughs> I'm laying around somewhere in my house now with 20 worker people <laughs> putting windows and locks in. <laughs> I'm sure somebody's having a good laugh. <laughs> you're, a, you're a very beautiful woman. I can only imagine how many times people have tried to set you up blind dates as we see in this movie. Hmm. What is that experience like? I, mean, I haven't really been on too many blind dates, to be honest. Only one, only one, a teaching assistant's a brother once a long time ago, and uh, I was really young, and that's it. Not a lot of blind dates. Do you remember the first time you fell in love? How old you were, who it was? Yeah, I do. And it was completely not something I was aware of until after I was moving away from home and not seeing this person anymore. How old were you? Uh, 14, probably. 14 and a lasting friendship through high school. And I went, oh, God, I loved him. <laughs> you know? So the film ponders the question, is true love attainable? Mm. You know, and it offers kind of all these various opinions one way or the other. What about for Renee? Is true love attainable? I mean, I don't know yet. Because we're in a very cynical world. This world we live in. We tend to like put, you know, try to dampen the fire. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And cynicism is, is projected onto your personal life experiences a lot. Um, but I am a ridiculously romantic idealist. I don't know if that makes me naive or silly, but I am. And no matter what, I still believe. <laughs> so, maybe. We'll see. Have you ever had two men fight over you? <laughs> I don't know if I would say fight. It wasn't necessarily coming to blows, but my life was definitely complicated at one point. <laughs> talking to the guys and they were talking about that, that, you know, we see in movies how men fight and so it was so choreographed and perfect and they were saying, no, it's not. Men can be, they get like little girls. They, they kick and they bite and they'll do anything. To the them. truth. Yeah, I heard about that, actually. I heard uh, in the, when we were in one of the press rooms yesterday, you and Colin talking about how, you know, they wanted it to be an honest, believable, real fight. How it happens, where you just kind of grab hold of whatever you can, and you don't want to get hit, so you're kind of ducking away and slapping and hair pulling and scratching. And I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know that that's what they were going for, and I was standing in the street watching the fight going, hmm. Looks a little different in Texas. <laughs> I was like, hmm. I especially like that kicking part where he's kicking but hopping away. <laughs> I mean, but it is truthful because uh, because there isn't that macho perfect one smack and your fist doesn't hurt and you're not bloody or sweaty or dirty and you just kind of walk off having saved the day. There's very little that's truthful about it. So I think something that's really appealing about this film in general is that all of the characters' vulnerabilities come out. They all come out. 
and uh, and it tells the truth, we can relate to that because we know what it's really like. <laughs> okay, let's find out what it's really like with uh, Renee in the kitchen. You're oh. how, are you a good cook? Mm -hmm. what is, how do you work your way around the kitchen? I think I'm not half bad, actually. I have a couple things that I'm okay at. What would be, uh, when you invite me over, what's, yes. what's going to be, uh, what's like the, the treasure trust? Depends on the occasion, but I make some mean biscuits. Mean biscuits. And I'll make you a really, really nice waffle cobble. What I, I loved in the movie, too, is that we're all kind of susceptible to this is we have to wear the right clothing, especially when you go out on a date. And for her, it even went down to her underwear. <laughs> you have to wear the right thing. Especially when you meet Joan Rivers. <laughs> How worried are you with clothing when you go out? I mean, do people ask you, do you worry about from the socks and underwear all the way up? Uh, I didn't used to until I got so cruelly made fun of that I thought, you know, I'm really not that bad at it. I just didn't pay attention. I never pay attention because you think, okay, what? You have so many other things to think about, getting to work on time and what your responsibilities are during the day that you don't really think, oh, okay, that was like fun for me. Like if I was going to go out or if I was going to meet my friends for dinner or something, then I, you know, I never implemented it as part of my work regime. But, I, you know, and now I think about it. Now I don't get ready the night before or on that morning and say, okay, uh, someone had once come in and it looks like you should grab what's on the top of the pile today. And yeah, well, you know what? That's the truth. <laughs> I did. Um, but yeah, so I think I think about it a little bit. But it's fun, um, and I'm learning more about it as um, a creative medium, and it's really interesting. And I'm having a lot of fun learning more about it. One of the great things of Bridges Life is her support system, this group of friends. Yes. And I was wondering, do you have that? Do you have that just group around you that? No matter how bad things go, they're there for you? I have the greatest collection of friends in the whole world. I have some of the most extraordinary, extraordinary people in my life. I'm really lucky, very lucky. And I collect them as I go. <laughs> and they, the list gets a little bit, little bit longer every now and then. As wonderful as this movie was to make for you, apparently it was, it was very hard as well because you couldn't bring someone you love with you. That was a little Dylan. Mm. How does that affect you when you're, you know, when you're on a set and this dog, which is such an integral part of your life, couldn't be there? I know it sounds kind of crazy, but um, it's just a, a, yeah, it's a family and so I not to have there, especially when she's my responsibility and I feel like I can't, can't be there. Um, no, you know, it's just your extra little support system that you might do without. But I gotta say, you know, it was a, a, a nice group of people, so. It wasn't uh, too hard. <laughs> I touched on this before about the message about the movie about body image and about how we perceive ourselves. Mm -hmm. What do you hope people walk out of this movie taking with them about self-worth? Just inspiration, maybe. Inspiration to look inside and say, okay, am I being honest? And am I being hypercritical of myself because of other people's expectations of who I should be and what I should achieve? And some paradigm of beauty, some myth of beauty that I don't particularly necessarily believe in that I'm trying to aspire to match. Hmm. Okay, now let's do questions. And laugh. Two and laugh. Okay, let's it's do the Chris, funny. The, Chris, the Chris Rock question. <laughs> I, I can't yeah. talk about Chris Rock. <laughs> We're in the middle of a sexual harassment suit, and um, so I'm not allowed to talk about him right now. I was getting really tired of him grabbing my backside every time I came to work. It's a little much, just a little much. And you think, he's got a beautiful wife and a wonderful family, and it just never stopped, ever. It never stopped. So I'm sorry I'm not allowed to talk about Chris right now. Let's talk hypothetical. What makes him so unique <laughs> as a comedian? Um, he's so perceptive and so smart and so honest. Uh, and he translates that in his humor. I mean, it's obvious that this guy uh, watches and has an opinion. And the way that he comes up with it is, is astounding to me, truly. And the way that he'll comment on it without fear of consequence, just tell the truth. He talks about things that make other people uncomfortable, situations that arise where we don't necessarily know which choice to make in terms of not hurting someone's feelings. And if we all just relax a little bit and made fun of it in the way that he does, I mean, you know, it'd be a lot easier. It's amazing though. He's very, very smart, and that's where his humor comes from, I'm sure of it. And I don't know anyone who has the ability to, to translate that 
power of observation into a really, really hysterical performance in the way that he does. And just go back to the first question again about why do you think a story, Bridget Jones, the book, because mm -hmm. you said you read it, why it right. resonates so strongly? I mean, when you first read it, that across boundaries, no matter what country people are right. from. Right, right. Um, because it's honest. It's really honest. It talks about a person's, or actually is dealing with a person's journey, a person's uh, uh, self-discovery, and, and through many, many missteps, um, self-acceptance, um, a person's ability to differentiate between what truly makes her happy and what other people are expecting of her um, and want for her. And uh, I think we all relate to that in some way. How much has been made when you're in your 30s? Is it tough being in your 30s? Or is it a good, time, good age? Oh, I'm having a good time. Life is good. Life is good. Renee, thank you very much. Thank you, too.